what do you think of this? Fanny and intern Vanessa are to a lot of fans seen as a major disappointment. It's no secret that many, and I mean many, consider her character to be wasted potential. Which I don't honestly blame you for. She really only had a handful of appearances in Security Breach itself, while also seemingly being built up to be the series' new main villain. And whether this is due to cut content, or maybe some miscommunication on Steel Wolf's part, I personally think that Vanny was still executed in a cool and interesting way. Maybe by putting all the pieces together, and going through Vanny and Vanessa as characters of this larger story, we can try and figure out what this character is really about. So, in this video, I want to go over Vanny and Vanessa's numerous appearances throughout the Five Nights at Freddy's series, going over their designs, history, and underlying purpose in this, well, new era. FNAF VR Help Wanted is the first time we're introduced to the character of Vanessa, more importantly in the Curse of Dreadbird DLC, where unlocking the cellar, appearing at the start of the Afraid of the Dark Mode's corn maze level, grants access to a secret room. This room, specifically, helms this bizarre looking rabbit mask, and grants the player the mask in the Help Wanted hub world as well. Players who then put on this mask while holding the green glitchy spring bonnie plush achieved when assimilating with Glitchtrap reveals dialogue of a seemingly one Sided conversation. Yes, I hear you. I made it myself. I think you would like it. Don't worry. I'll be ready. And I won't let you down. It will be fun. We can assume that this conversation is coming from the one whose mask this belongs to, which people quickly referred to this character as the reluctant follower, due to the description given for the voice actor. Already, the words reluctant follower clue us into this character's purpose, being a person who unwillingly follows one's commands. In the tapes we hear throughout, presented by Tape Girl, we hear of a character by the name of Jeremy, who, after seemingly encountering the virus in the game's code as a beta tester, starts to slowly crack. And no, it's not due to being the third character named Jeremy in this series so far. He stopped reacting to abrupt jump scares in the game, always seems exhausted from a general lack of sleep, and from what we later learn, seems to cut his own face off using a guillotine paper slicer. Have you ever heard of a guillotine paper slicer? It sounds made up, but it's an actual piece of office equipment. I knew how dangerous it looked. I was always afraid of losing a finger. That seems so silly now. Jeremy used to do design work. I guess that's how he knew it was there. Whoever we're playing as is Glitchtrap's next plaything, and has been instructed to move forward with his plan. If all of this seems a little confusing at first, FNAF AR, Special Delivery, of all things, actually explains a lot of this with its released and unreleased emails. Essentially, in the mobile game, users could get emails that functioned as brief tutorials, notifications, or tips. However, occasionally, players would receive emails that were not meant for them to view well, in the game's terms, and some were actually never officially released. This could have been due to actually a lot of different factors, but most likely due to Security Breach's release date being delayed originally, and then a Lumix disappearing off the face of the earth. Anyway, most of these hidden emails served as messages from Fazbear Entertainment employees. Specifically, many talk about a virus plaguing their system when they had finished scanning the last set of circuit boards. But thanks to a V underscore A, this virus is now out, and completely isolated into its very own location. Later on, however, they soon learn that this same user is still accessing the system to give commands to active animatronics, and slowly logging the rest of the employees out of the system. From the log's staff sheet, we know that this V underscore A refers to none other than Vanessa A, who works under the security department under Fazbear Entertainment, and is said to be around 23 years old. Regarding her emails, we learn of another character named Luis Cabrera, who works in the marketing department and has been constantly emailing this same Vanessa about, well, a variety of things. He also seems romantically interested in Vanessa, or how Luis refers to her, Ness, as per her username is Nessie97. No, no not that Ness. These specific emails give us small insight into Vanessa's workplace habits, like ordering a Viking Blood Eagle 12-month calendar or three lifelike human male rubber masks, searching for how to induce compliance in human subjects, and how far can a human being be cut in half before losing consciousness. Obviously just normal things that any sane person would search online. But more importantly, she's created an IT department email address to access the Fazbear Entertainment system internally, and has overridden the general security protocols, a security breach perhaps, designed to execute direct commands to the animatronics in the Pizzaplex. 
which we later learn is the building we see teased in Help Wanted. So from what we know so far, Glitchtrap's infection has spread to a character named Vanessa, where her main goal is to override the animatronics and give herself full access to the newest Fazbear establishment. There's even mention of her designing her very own costume, given Lewis's message about her purchasing different fabrics. Hopefully all of this will be revealed to us in the next official game, and no merchandising company will spoil the surprise. Oh, that's right, everybody's favorite company, Funko, may have accidentally hit the release button on the official names and even the designs for the newest characters, action figures, and mystery minis in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise before the actual reveals, which of course includes Vanny, which I guess at one point was referred to as Vanny, with an IE at the end. And while this doesn't necessarily serve as a leak, this collectible statue that Funko released depicts both two characters named Vanessa and Vanny standing alongside one another, with many suspecting that their shared likenesses in both names and stature could mean something. And well, here it is. From what was initially teased in both official teasers, trailers, and maybe accidental marketing ploys is the newest Fazbear establishment, Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, as seen in FNAF Security Breach. In this game, we get a good look at Vanessa, sporting a security guard outfit, which perfectly fits her description from Finance Freddy's AR Special Delivery. She also has blonde hair, securely tied in a ponytail, green eyes, sometimes yellow ones, and has purplish pink colored nails. One strange design choice that this game simply neglects is her rainbow-colored hair extensions that Lewis describes in one of his emails to Vanessa in FNAF AR. The appearance of Vanny, seen in Security Breach, also matches what we last heard from Vanessa's received messages in FNAF AR, where she was purchasing fabrics to make a costume. This costume by itself is also very interesting, resembling the same mask we saw in Help Wanted, minus the brown spots and visible tongue. However, the general facial appearance of the mask still matches its look from Help Wanted, with it also being seen in Security Breach's gameplay trailer. The stitching seen on her costume is also related to both her dialogue and Help Wanted, saying she made it herself. I made it myself and the visible stitching also seen on Glitchtrap's model, seemingly somewhat inspired by his attire. In the game itself, Vanny only really has three distinct appearances to the player. One, after leaving the daycare in the charging station, where interestingly, Glamrock Freddy is unable to see her. Two, when the player gets transported to Lost and Found after getting caught by Vanessa. And three, during the two different Vanny endings. Aside from these, Vanny can spawn at certain sections of the game to throw Gregory off course. Some examples being after leaving Lost and Found and entering the atrium, or after leaving the sewers, which genuinely did scare me the first time I was playing. And before I go on, let's just cut to the chase. Vanessa and Vanny, from all of the evidence surrounding the games, seem to be the exact same person. It's Vanessa wearing a costume. With one of the endings in the game, we physically take off her mask, revealing someone who resembles the exact same appearance of Vanessa. Big surprise ranging from official merchandise to the various endings and even dialogue explained in the game. I think her name is... Vanny? Vanny. It is very similar to Vanessa, and also Bunny. That cannot be a coincidence. It's pretty clear that Vanessa and Vanny are, well, one and the same. Even the official character encyclopedia considers these two to be the same, and even confirms that she has been corrupted by Glitchtrap. Although, take that with a grain of salt, after all it is the character encyclopedia. I mean, just look at these figures that I actually bought. Here's Vanessa, and here's Vanny. Taking Vanny's mask off literally reveals, well, none other than Vanessa. This is also evident in Vanessa's presence throughout the entire game as well. Vanessa shows up at the start of Security Breach, clearly trying to find Gregory. Afterwards, she can sometimes be seen surveying around the Pizzaplex, until Gregory is suddenly found by both Mapbot and Vanessa, where she promptly places him in the lost and found room, saying, I'll bet you think you're real clever, Gregory. Yeah, I know your name. You're in big trouble. This is not the night to be wasting my time. So. You are going to wait right there in Lost and Found until your parents or the police arrive. After this, the cameras quickly switch to her alter ego, Vanny, and she prances her way to the same room, notably doing clearly similar movements that we've seen Glitchtrap do in Help Wanted. However, 
There's even more about Vanessa hidden inside the contents of Security Breach. When Gregory hits Roxanne Wolf with a go-kart, steals her eyes, and replaces Freddy's eyes with them, he's able to see small CDs around the Pizzaplex. There are 16 CDs in total, and when uncovering a small hidden room resembling the one we see Michael Afton eat popcorn in in Sister Location, we can play and listen to these tapes individually. In these CDs, we learn a little bit more about what was mentioned in FNAF AR. Out of the 16 tapes, Patient 71, or Vanessa, clearly speaks in tapes 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 10, 11, and 12 as the therapist clearly states her name directly, or we hear Vanessa's voice from the other end. The rest of the tapes are about Client 46, which is a whole nother topic that I won't get into as much, as I believe it doesn't necessarily have to do with Vanessa herself. But it is interesting that this same client does a lot of the activities that Vanessa personally dislikes or declines to. Where she likes the sun and certain flowers, but dislikes candy, Client 46 would rather have the curtains drawn, doesn't like the flowers, and even takes a piece of candy. Sure, you can have a candy. I love one too. The most important topics that the therapist tapes on Vanessa's end brings up involve Lewis, her father, who's referred to as Bill, Glitchtrap's control over her, and her costume, I guess. So, on your breaks, it looks like you were shopping for a costume. You purchased some fake fur material. What are you gonna make? Listening to the tapes yourself, you can hear the distinct changes in Vanessa's tone in CDs 7, 9, and 12. This seems to represent times when Glitchtrap's influence over Vanessa takes shape, where she doesn't act quite like herself anymore. Sometimes I talk with Lewis. He's in the marketing department. He's nice, I guess. I'm needed somewhere else now. And when Vanessa is talking to the therapist about seemingly Glitchtrap, she seems to think she's talking about her father. I can't talk about this. He said he would always be watching. He could be here or there or anywhere. Are you talking about your dad? Have those feelings come up again? I hate sounding like a broken record, but this is something you really need to resolve if you're ever going to be happy. I have. I compartmentalized him. He's locked away. This mention of her father must bring some level of importance to him. As explained by the therapist, Bill is referred to as, by all means, an abusive father to Vanessa. Their family life is described to be quite dysfunctional, with Bill forcing his daughter into testifying against her mother in court, leading him to gain custody of her. I try to do what I'm supposed to do. I know you do. Your supervisor notes that you follow instructions perfectly. Your dad made you follow instructions, didn't he? I'm talking about the custody battle between your mum and your dad. Your dad didn't play fair, did he? He used to make your mum look bad in court. I suppose I don't need you to tell me it felt bad to have a parent scare you into saying things that weren't true. He manipulated you. I know your mum after she lost the custody case. Due to different scenes in these tapes, this absolutely had an effect on Vanessa. I was supposed to be a good girl. What happened to her had nothing to do with you, even though it was your testimony that did it. Perhaps this being a reason that Glitchtrap targeted Vanessa in the first place, as she seems persistent to following orders, as sad as that may be. It's also no secret that Vanessa's mention of a last name starting with A and her father's name being Bill can easily be perceived as William Afton, as Bill or Billy is a common nickname for people called William. Bill, right? Your dad's name was Bill? But since this seems kind of implausible, it's more likely that this is either a major fabrication influenced by Glitchtrap, or a comparison or parallel in terms of her story between her father and William Afton, which I think is more likely. Both of these fathers' abusive and violent behaviors have left their innocent children as victims, but now essential characters in a far larger story than they were ever meant to be. As is clear by these tapes, Vanessa is not in full control of herself anymore, as the effects of merging with Glitchtrap and Help Wanted transformed her from her usually bubbly and bright personality mentioned in FNAF AR's emails into this sadistic killer. 
but that doesn't mean she isn't fully under his spell. In some of the different messages found in duffel bags around the pizzaplex, Vanessa can be seen detailing logs named security report. She states one instance of missing wind up music man prototypes, saying that there's glass on the floor, but no sign of a break in. This is most definitely Vanny, who set these up in the vents around the pizzaplex that Gregory and even Cassie regularly encounter. The second instance is about a local police officer calling in about an emergency call inside the pizzaplex, which she dismisses as a prank caller. However, with what we've seen regarding Vanessa's split personality, forgetfulness of Glitchtrap's possession, and the disappearances of at least nine others in the pizzaplex, it could be very likely that one of these people was the one to make that same call. Oh yeah, and she most likely murdered nine residents here, with many somewhat resembling children. So we've got good and bad news. Good news, we got your payment, buddy. Bad news, uh, they gave you life. Sayonara. <laughs> in FNAF Security Breach, there are six possible endings that the player can reach. And out of these, four of the six endings somewhat involve Vanny or Vanessa. The bad or one star ending of the game involves Gregory fleeing the pizzaplex at 6 a.m., where Vanny follows close behind. The rooftop ending involves Gregory and Freddy leaving through the prize counter's emergency exit, where again Vanny catches up to Gregory. However, Freddy, now able to see Vanny with the use of Roxanne's eyes, quickly tackles her off the building and presumably kills them both, with the reveal that Vanny is in fact Vanessa. Wow, I had no idea. The most confusing part comes with the revelation behind the post credit scene, where Vanessa is seen still lingering atop the now burning pizzaplex, likely representing her spirit or soul still remaining there, or the fact that there is a better ending for her character in this game. The disassembled Vanny ending is kind of self-explanatory, and is from completing the Vanny route of the game. The Vanny route entails Vanny, duh, atop her presumed lair in Phazerblast, who gives the order to disassemble Glamrock Freddy. If Gregory reaches her lair in time, pressing that same button will make Gregory give the order to disassemble her. Come on! Come on! You guys know I was just kidding! The second ending involving the Vanny route is through completing each of the three Princess Quest retro arcade cabinets. The Princess Quest arcade cabinets were first introduced in Security Breach, with the actual game being playable in Help Wanted's first mobile port, which is also mentioned in Security Breach. In Security Breach, there are three different titles to Princess Quest, with each one starting where the last ended off. The games involve a yellow princess either making her way through or directly fighting Dark Rabbit enemies, and usually ending up facing against Glitchtrap. The third arcade cabinet, however, is a drastic change of pace compared to the other two. From where she left off, the princess seems to be in a digital recreation of the location from the first FNAF game, but leaning more towards its Help Wanted hub world redesign, with the appearance of the prize counter. Taking on both Grim Foxy and the strange series of Travelators, yes that's a word, the princess is gifted both the same Vanny Mask and Glitchtrap plush from Help Wanted, using both these items to later open and unlock the trap door we see ourselves locked in from Help Wanted as well. Completing this arcade cabinet in Vanny's lair gives us the princess quest ending, where Gregory, Freddy, and even Vanessa all walk out of the pizzaplex together, later seen sitting atop a large hill, eating ice cream. From the resemblance of the icons to the journey she eventually takes, I believe that the princess represents Vanessa and her eventual slaying of Glitchtrap's control over her. From the emails presented in FNAF AR, we know that Vanessa was able to isolate the Glitchtrap virus in a secure location while also under the control of it, with the rest of the staff believing it to be fully wiped out. However, we know that this is later used to fully command the Glamrock animatronics at the Pizzaplex. And while I could see this being isolated inside the Glitchtrap plushie, I find it far likely for it to be referring to, well, the Princess Quest arcade cabinets, as it's seen to both stop the animatronics' pursuit of Gregory and freeze Vanessa from the Vanny persona. However, this is not the last we'll see of both Princess Quest and Vanny. In fact, all it took was a ruined Pizzaplex. The only actual appearance of Vanessa in Security Breach's DLC, named Ruin, is through the codenamed Brazil Ending, where she's seen slightly obscured in the background, wearing her same attire that she's seen in the Princess Quest ending of Security Breach. But with Vanny, that's a whole nother story. The main gimmick throughout Cassie's adventure through the ruined Pizzaplex is none other than the same rabbit mask seen in Help Wanted at least visually. This mask acts a bit different though, revealing small technical bits in the back. Look at all the wires and stuff. 
that allow Cassie to transport herself to an AR landscape of the same Pizzaplex. Helpy calls this mask the Virtual Augmented Neural Network Integration or Vanny for short. Her trademark purple graffiti signs are also present in the ruined location, notably being her face symbol near the elevators that lead to the atrium. The last resemblance of any sort of Vanny is through the comic book page collectibles that Cassie collects, even saying that they look like Gregory drew them. All of the comic book pages somewhat resemble a panel seen in the various endings to Security Breach, with the exception of the Princess Quest ending. On this same topic, Princess Quest 3 is also actually seen again, being in its exact same location in Vanny's hideout. When Cassie wears the Vanny AR mask, it shows the princess's sword stabbing the arcade cabinet. Both of these pieces of evidence have led many, including myself, to believe that this is considered the canon ending to Security Breach, which will be important later. Regarding Gregory's comic book drawings, Vanny is seen in these three separate times, through Gregory's depictions of the bad ending, rooftop ending, and disassemble Freddy ending. With this, we get to the most recent appearance of Vanny in FNAF Help Wanted 2, which, just like its predecessor, features Vanny once again, mainly seen in one of the two separate endings of the game. Her depiction is revealed after getting all of the requirements to play Princess Quest 4, where at the end of the dungeon, behind the sister location elevator walls, stands a ginormous version of Vanny. She stands over the player, who's stuck inside a Crane Game Arcade cabinet. When Moon retrieves the Glitchtrap plushie from the player, she reveals and crushes Glitchtrap in the palm of her hand. Getting a closer look at Glitchtrap, however, reveals that Vanny's intent doesn't seem too friendly, to him at least, as he shakes his head no before being squished. Regarding Vanny, this ending seems really strange. As, if the Princess Quest ending is believed to be canon, and Help Wanted 2 takes place after the events of Security Breach, why is she suddenly back? I mean, we see her, Gregory, and Freddy leave the location. Well, one detail specified in the contents of Help Wanted 2 are the two different stories told by our favorite pizza sim robot, Candy Cadet. While one story focuses on a family dying because they missed out on a pizza deal, the other story, to me at least, is a little more interesting. Take a listen. Now let me tell you a story about a young woman who, when she was little, was led into a dark forest by a witch, and almost eaten. She had fallen for the friendly voice without discernment, and was led astray. She had escaped before being thrown into the oven, but would have a scar for the rest of her life. When she had grown, she sought revenge on the witch, and entered the forest again willingly. This time with the confidence of age and experience, she was greeted at the mouth of the forest by a young boy who offered to help guide her through the darkness. She welcomed the help, and followed the young boy over the river, through the jagged trees, and toward a small house. Come the boy said, rest here before killing the witch. The young woman was tired and would kill the witch in the morning. She followed the boy into the house. The oven door closed. The witch would finally have her meal. Now, take it as you will, but a story of a girl being deceived by an evil entity could match the case with either Cassie, being deceived by the mimic, or Vanessa, being directly deceived by Glitchtrap. But the second half of the story, detailing a grown woman seeking revenge on the witch with a young boy, sounds a lot more like Vanessa. We know that Gregory had to have returned to the Pizzaplex after the events of Security Breach due to his handprint and backpack being left behind, and his prior knowledge of the Mexis entity. The Mexis security program was designed to keep it hidden, but you shut down the security, and now it's free. And if the Princess Quest ending of that game is to be believed as canon, which there is a lot of evidence backing this, then both Vanessa and Gregory went together to try and destroy the Mimic and the remaining bits of Glitchtrap. Perhaps this is what we see in one of Help Wanted 2's endings, Vanessa donning the Vanny persona one more time to put a permanent end to Glitchtrap for good. But to be fair, this is simply speculation. What if Vanny, through the departure of Vanessa, has become its own sort of entity remaining in the Pizzaplex to finish Glitchtrap? I mean, it's not like we haven't seen characters in the FNAF series, especially in Security Breach and Ruin, start to manifest around the Pizzaplex. But who knows? Some other small but notable appearances of the character come with similar looking graffiti art associated with Vanny, seen when progressing further through the game's levels in the revealed hub world, with these actually revealing some of the locations to the memory dolls to achieve and unlock the fourth Princess Quest title. 
She's also seen in the gallery in the show stage, and of course the Vanny AR mask makes another appearance, bearing its depiction from Ruin. But what most people don't know is the cut content regarding Vanny in this game. In fact, she has multiple lines that just go unused in the final product, even weirdly being credited in the end credits with no actual dialogue present in the final game. Here's a few of the most important missing dialogue pieces. Don't worry, they can't hear me. I'm on a special signal the staff can't process. You need to listen to me carefully. Don't help it escape. It's using you to finish where she left off. Only a small piece of his code remains. Look for my messages. They will guide you. You have a chance to end it and bring him to me. These messages set up a clear narrative that Vanny, who's actively communicating to the player, is back to bring an end to Glitchtrap's small status. Princess Quest 4, the alpha build, was the last remaining presence of Glitchtrap still stuck in the Pizzaplex. Achieving this subsequent good ending brings him and his remaining code to an end by Vanny's hand. But of course, this all goes unused in the final game, for whatever reason. And unfortunately, regarding Tales from the Pizzaplex, well, Vanessa or Vanny are never even mentioned in any of the books. In other words, there's nothing. Which so far puts a close on Vanny or Vanessa's storyline. So Vanessa, being a 23 year old, at least during FNAF AR's special delivery, is coerced into being a puppet to Glitchtrap's master plan, simply harming slash killing other people. This is due to the effects of scanning in old circuit boards to the Freddy Fazbear virtual experience. What happened to then Jeremy is now happening to Vanessa, leading her to getting the security department gig at Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, which is suspiciously open and offered with little to no experience. Personally, I wish Glitchtrap would help me with my resume, but whatever. Anyway, Vanessa dons her Vanny persona and persists with kidnapping slash murdering at least nine residents until Gregory, who'd finished all of the Princess Quest titles, frees her from Glitchtrap's control and sometime after returning to the Pizzaplex, where honestly, it's left fairly ambiguous as to where she'll end up next. I know that Vanny and in turn Vanessa is a joked about character in the series, but honestly, she's quickly becoming one of my personal favorites. To see a character we actually play as go from an innocent protagonist to the antagonist and another character's story is a really cool idea. But whether or not it worked in the end is, well, up to you. I don't think she was ever really designed to be the main villain for this new era of FNAF, but more so a product of it, being Glitchtrap or even the Mimic. And with her appearance in the newest movie being a different take of her character in the games, I'd love to see where her story goes from here in both pieces of media. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, I'd highly appreciate leaving a like on it or even subscribing as it helps me out a lot. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Take care.